green as the new black. Seems so. A very senior Rebels bikey has written a letter to us. Jason Dixon is a one-time acting state president of Australia's biggest gang. The 47-year-old is now serving several years at His Majesty's pleasure at Bunbury Regional Prison. He's there for breaching bail by possessing meth, prescription drugs and human growth hormones. Volker, quick! Gang crime found the drugs in his Australian home on May 16, while he was on bail for other offences. What's in the letter? Jason has taken issue with the media for using an outdated photo of him. Oh. You wrote an article on me in the West Australian roughly around July. He says, I am sending you an updated picture as the one you keep using is several years old. <laughs> he wants this photo used instead. It's from his summer collection and shows the now bearded human meat axe in his prison greens. So hot right now. A polite request. Very. Signed off, yours sincerely, Jason Anthony Dixon. Oh. Dixon has been in the crosshairs of the gang crime squad for quite a while. A couple of years ago, he was embroiled in a bizarre dispute over resources tenements between gold mining chances Stephen Parnell and Adam John Lawrence McKay. In 2016, Parnell walked into the Belgian beer cafe in the Perth CBD to finalise a settlement. Instead of negotiating with old mate, he found himself at a table with a bunch of heavies his former business partner had arranged to lean on him. Jason, who was the head of the Rebel Southwest chapter, was one of the heavies there to make Parnell an offer too good to refuse. And hit the spot. Jason got the promotion as the Rebels acting big kahuna when Carl LeBrook was slapped with an anti-consorting order. Hard to run an outlaw motorcycle gang when you can't come to the clubhouse. Sorry, not you, Homer. Why not? Speaking of Carl, he's been in the news again. Just pleaded not guilty to charges relating to cash and drugs that were laid in April. Police say he was found with $30,000 of unlawfully obtained cash and 11.22 grams of methamphetamine. Carl is claiming the cash was the takings from a restaurant he used to own. What are you? An idiot sandwich. He says he was forced to hold folding because no bank would have him as a customer. His lawyer, Michael Chidori, told court at a previous hearing that Commonwealth Bank, Bendigo Bank and Westpac had over the years told Carl they were, and I quote, closing your bank account because of who you are. And it's nothing personal. In his latest appearance before the bench, LeBrook had his bail changed so he can leave the state to see his family. He's still banned from contacting members of the Revels though, which makes life very difficult for a bloke who has spent most of his adult life running with that gang. I wish I knew how to quit you. Twiggy's not happy with his gang. Andrew Forrest has been stung for speaking candidly after this week's Fortescue Metals AGM. He forgot the first rule of Mike Club. Always assume it's on. People listening in on the live stream heard him complaining about how the meeting was a drag. He was heard saying, the welcome to country was way too long, the speeches were way too long, everything was too long. I have to read that because the actual audio has been bleached from the internet by Fortescue's media minders. Well then delete it! Delete it! It's Just delete it! Delete it! It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, this whole show was a hot mic moment, so there but for the grace of God. <laughs> it was pretty tame compared to some others. Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> I could do anything. I got better. Question number five, Nicola Willis. This f***ing language. Not the only spicy thing at the AGM. I can understand why he wanted it to be shorter. In between fending off questions about a tiff he's having with an American billionaire over a green hydrogen plant and a tiff over an alleged inappropriate relationship at his mining company, Twiggy found time to create a tiff with Woodside Petroleum, which now calls itself Woodside Energy, despite the fact it makes all its money from petroleum. What's his beef? Reckons Woodside and other big oil merchants are playing down the threat of climate change. It's so damn hot. Milk was a bad choice. He told shareholders, it is selfishness in the extreme to do nothing if you're entrusted as a leader to stay maniacally glued to supporting fossil fuel. Says companies like Woodside and Exxon are the world's greatest deceivers. Ooh, fighting words. Well, as long as we're all in the mood to condemn deception, let's now note that Andrew Forrest is currently building an LNG import terminal at Port Kembla and funding it with the 300 odd million dollars a year he gets from the federal government under the diesel fuel rebate. I see you. I'm Ben Harvey. Thank you. 
two young girls. They mattered to people. There's unexpected turns and unexpected results. 